everyone, it's Yashika. I am a personal mastery consultant for those of you that don't know me. And what that means is that I help you learn how to become your ideal self so that you can connect with opportunities and circumstances that propel you onto the path for your highest and best good. So today, what I want to talk to you about is why you are feeling lost. So I'm going to go over three reasons why you might be feeling lost. But not only that, I'm not going to leave you hanging at the end of this video. I will give you some things that you can start to implement immediately so you can start to regain your sense of direction. So let's get into the video. So the first reason why you may feel lost is because you don't live in the now. Life is just full of all these ups and downs. It throws us for a loop. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. And when it's bad, sometimes it can be really bad. But sometimes when life is not feeling as fancy and as carefree as it should, one thing that we tend to do is we tend to look back at our past and we tend to romanticize the past and make the past seem better than it really was and make the past seem better than our current situation. Or you could just be stuck in the past because there is something that you need to get over in order to move forward in your present condition. But either way, you have to understand that while our past is important, we have to really monitor how much energy we are giving toward the past because the past does not have to be part of us connecting to happiness here in our future. And nine times out of 10, if you were honest about what happened in the past, it had its own set of challenges and struggles that we tend to forget about when we're being down on our current situation or feeling lost in where we currently are in life. What we really have to remember is that as humans, we are not meant to be stuck in the past. We are meant to change. We are meant to grow. We are meant to evolve. And I teach that your outer world is going to change things change your children change jobs change finances change all of the things that you experience outside of yourself inevitably changes and so looking back at the past and holding on to the past like it was some phenomenal thing that we won't ever get to experience again can be very limiting for you to find your sense of direction here in the present. You know, some of our biggest leaps in life, some of the biggest lessons in life that we have and some of the biggest wins that we have in life come right on the tail of some of the biggest challenges that we have in our life. Growth, evolution, change, it all comes through friction, whether that friction be positive or negative. And again, it's about perspective. And being in the past instead of being here in the now is not going to help you find your sense of direction. The other way this could go is that you could be thinking too much about the future and not living in the now. So what that would look like is you're always like me wanting what that next thing, what is what's next? What's next? What can I accomplish next? Where can I go next? What's going to happen in a year? What's going to happen in a month? Like you are always so future, thinking so future oriented that the only thing that really matters in life and the only thing that is actually real in life is not the past, is not the future, it is the moment that we are living in right now. You could also just be guilty of always trying to find the next new thing, try the next new thing, chasing happiness and thinking it's something ahead of you or outside of you or in front of you instead of trying to find it in the now. Usually what that ends up doing though is it makes you feel even more lost and even more disconnected because you feel like you're putting out a lot of effort and you feel like you're trying a lot of different things but you don't feel like you're getting the results that you want because you are looking for the next new thing or the happiness or um, something that can help you change how you feel right now and you're trying to find it ahead of yourself and outside of yourself. This is a big one. This is a key one that I see so much. And it's that you don't have a set of values upon which to live by. Either you never developed a set of values or you have a set of values that you think are yours, but they're really your mom's, your dad's, your family's, your jobs, 
or societies. And so you never really take the time to think about what your own personal core values are versus what everyone else tells you that your core values should be. Your core values are a set of beliefs upon which you use as guiding principles to help you through life. So without your own set of core values that you use as guiding principles that guide your actions that you take throughout life that align with who you are and what you believe in, then you're going to feel a sense of loss you're going to feel directionless. This can really lead to you feeling lost because you don't really know who you are at this point. And you may not have ever known who you were. Or like I mentioned earlier, when life gives us ups and downs, what happens is we never take the time to evaluate that as we have changed through the things that have shaped us in our lives, we don't often look at our core values and make sure that they still line up with who we are after we went through our growth and evolution and change because your values are not stationary. They can change, they can grow, they can be shaped differently. They evolve as you evolve. And if you're still holding on to something that may not be of value to you right now, it causes a feeling of disconnect. It causes you not to be in alignment with who you are right now and that could cause you to feel lost. And then the last thing that I wanna to mention today is that you may feel lost because you are stuck in your comfort zone. Being the same person, let's say at 18 years old, as you were when you were 10, is just as asinine as you being the same person at 30 years old as you were when you were 21. Or being the same person at 40 years old as you were when you were 30 years old. Let that sink in. You know, sometimes I'll have conversations with people in my family and they often will assign meaning to the things that I used to do so long ago, even as a teenager. Oh, you know, how did you become so organized when you used to have clothes all over your room? But it's like I was a child. I was a teenager. If I was the same person that I was at 16 that I am now, how limiting would that be for me? And of course, it seems asinine when we're looking at that younger age group, but it should be the same way. If you've had ups and downs and you're learning your lessons in life and you're trying to grow and evolve and be a better person, then what you should find is that you're going to outgrow who you were at different areas in your life. But if you find that you're still continuing to stay in your comfort zone, maybe stay with the same friends if if they don't serve you well or maybe take the same vacations eat the same food just never want to open yourself up to trying new things and experiencing life in new ways then think how limiting that could be and even though you don't feel like you may have outgrown some of those things when you do deep internal reflection, you will find that your challenges and struggles in life should have an impact on your growth. And if they are having an impact on your growth, there are some things about what you are connected to that should at least in some way evolve, change, or grow to continue to be congruent with who you are in the present. There's something that ties to this last point that I just made and it also could have you feeling stuck because maybe you lack a sense of self-worth. Maybe you lack what you feel to be supportive relationships in your life or maybe you hope for more but because of certain stressors or certain traumas that have happened to you, you have kind of just shut down and you find that because you have shut yourself off from moving forward in life, it causes a sense of feeling lost or feeling directionless. When life beats us down or breaks us down, we usually have two choices in life and that's to move forward more open and more vulnerable than ever. But it could also go the other way where we just choose to just shut down because we've been beaten down so hard. But <laughs> there's hope. I'll talk about it in some of our future videos. However, I wanna leave you with three things that you can start to implement in your life now in order for you to move from the feeling of being lost and um, directionless to feeling like you're at least on track to starting to gain a sense of clarity and direction in your life. The first thing that you can do is you can try mindfulness exercises. 
And for me, my favorite form of mindfulness exercises is meditation. Specifically, what I like, especially if you're a beginner, is doing body scan meditations that teach you how to relax from your head all the way down to your toes. And the reason why I like those is because they teach you to isolate your attention to particular parts of your body and be mindful to how those smaller parts of your body feel, which in turn has you live in the now. And I do have a body scan meditation. It's about five minutes long. It's very easy to do. And so if you want access to that meditation, make sure you reach out and let me know. The second thing you can do to connect to your values is you can do a journaling exercise. And I have some prompts here that will help you to get started with that. The first question you can ask yourself is, what are you most proud of? The second thing that you can ask yourself is what makes you happy? The third thing you can ask yourself is what makes you angry? The fourth thing you can ask yourself is what's important to you in life? And this fifth thing is a little bit more morbid, but you can ask yourself if you were to pass on, what is the legacy you want to live behind? What is the truth you want to live behind? What do you want people to say about you? Something along those lines. And those five questions should get you started at least into thinking about what lights you up, what doesn't light you up. And the things that you usually get angry about means that you have some sort of core belief around those things and they can help you start to get connected back to who you are, which in turn will help you to start to not feel as lost or disconnected from yourself. What you need to not do is overthink this because especially if you're in a hard place, you'll be like, there's nothing to be happy about. You can make it as simple as possible. Don't overthink this. I'm happy because coffee makes me happy. You know, it could be something very small. Don't overthink it. Just go into the activity, journaling. And like I said, nine times out of 10, when I use this in my practice, it brings up things for clients that'll bring things up for you that maybe you hadn't thought of, especially if you're kind of in the weeds of it all and you don't really see a way out. The last thing, if you find yourself stuck, you need to remember that there is no miraculous thing that's going to come in and make you feel unstuck. And to feel stuck doesn't necessarily mean that you are stuck. To feel lost doesn't necessarily mean that you are lost. What's going to change that immediately is by breaking that barrier of inertia that has been created by a lack of forward movement. And I'm a big believer that you do not have to make big, aggressive, massive moves, especially if you don't feel in your heart and soul like you're energetically aligned with taking massive action. I believe that if you pick something that you know that you wanted to start, and for all of us, it's gonna be different. And for some of us, it's gonna be starting to eat more vegetables. For some of us, it's gonna be starting to express ourselves more authentically, um, going to different restaurants. It's gonna be different. So pick one thing that you want to start. And what I encourage is that you try to do that thing at least 80% of the time. So you don't even have to be perfect. Think about this. If you ate a vegetable 80% of the month, you would have eaten a vegetable over 20 days of that month. And if you think about where you were at the start versus where you are at the end, eating vegetables 20 days out of 30, 31 days is an amazing feat for you as a beginner starting to do something. And if you think about it in a year's time, if you kept that up, just think about how much progress you can make just by doing one small change and not even having to do it perfect, not even putting pressure on yourself to be perfect, but at least breaking that barrier of inertia and getting started on something that you know it is that you want to start. It doesn't have to be perfect action. It doesn't have to be massive action. You just have to start something and do it at least 80% of the time. That's it. And that's all I have for you today. Like I said, I will be coming on doing some more videos to help you to get unstuck from this feeling of being lost or feeling directionless. But now you kind of understand some things that could cause you to feel that way. And you also have some tangible things that you can start to do now to get out of feeling lost and directionless and to start again feeling like you are on your path to gaining a sense of direction and a sense of purpose. 
If you would like to connect with me further, you can look for my information on my profile. Like I said, I work with clients to help them connect with their ideal self so that they can go on to create big dreams and big goals for themselves and accomplish those dreams. And I hope that this helps you. I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye.